Today, packing for a big trip. I'm heading to Mexico for three weeks of photographing, kite surfing, wildlife, people, landscapes, cityscapes. I'm gonna show you why I've chosen to bring what I'm bringing and how I'm gonna travel with it both on the airlines and once I'm there on the ground. Well, hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. I'm Hudson and I'm taking off on a big trip. Actually, when you watch this, I'll already be on it. And, and it's a little bit of a complicated one because it's a family trip. We're kite surfers. I'm gonna be photographing, kite surfing, and it's gonna be wildlife, people, landscapes, some cityscapes, and some old UNESCO World Heritage sites. And then I'm gonna travel from Baja over to Mazatlan and scout for the total eclipse that's happening there, the city's right in the center line in 2024, and get some locations dialed in for a workshop next spring. So it's a complicated trip to pack for, and I've been constantly making tough decisions. What gets to stay, or what gets to come, what am I gonna have to leave behind? We're bringing a lot of weight on this trip. That's one of the challenges. So sort of as I've been making all of these decisions, I've been kind of defaulting towards a little bit lighter kit that can do everything that I need. So we'll go through how I'm making those decisions, how I'm packing it, both the travel on the plane to run around photographing, what am I choosing for different kits for different situations, uh, and how am I traveling with it uh, and my family and all of our kite surfing gear. You know, and and you know, as I go through all this, just know that all the gear that I use and trust and that I'm talking about in this video, from the backpacks to the tripods to the cameras and lenses and accessories and support gear, is all on my website at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. Those links help me out and, and I really appreciate it. I even include links to the duffels and other bags that I pack on the airlines that work really well for me. Okay. So, as I said, you know, I've been kind of defaulting to smaller and lighter. You know, the, the, one of the biggest decisions I make is which backpack am I taking? And, and you know, I, I love these Naya Evo bags. I love the large 60C with the integrated dry bag and all of its storage room, especially on bigger trips and workshops. But in this case, you know, I'm gonna be running around on the ground a lot. I'm going with a slightly lighter kit. Uh, I want to be able to look a little more incognito when I'm running through cities. Uh, and so I, I defaulted to taking the, uh, the 36 instead, the smaller Naiva bag, which I also love. You know, it doesn't have that integrated dry bag. Uh, its harness isn't as adjustable, but it, it serves the purpose perfectly. It looks a little more incognito. I'll get some sand on it when I get there, since I haven't used this bag quite as much, I'll dirty it up a little bit before I get to Mazatlan. Um, and that limits, you know, how much gear am I taking? This is gonna fit better for me. Same thing goes for tripods. You know, I absolutely love having my tall light fluid head set up, the seven pound set up that gets 80 inches tall, but it's big, it's bulky, and it's a little heavy. And I don't love the idea of carrying this thing uh, through the city looking for locations for the eclipse. So I'm gonna default to taking my ultra light custom build with the Acrotec pan and tilt head, the three pound setup, uh, and put my TFS spikes with the little plastic strip off caps so that I can easily use this in the surf and sand. That gets it well above my eye level at six feet uh, with the built-in leveling adapter. So that's sort of the first decision. You know, obviously I'll take my nodal rail, my LRP3 that comes with either of those tripods because that lets me get level and, and uh, lets me get the weight distributed in a really equalized fashion over the top of this pan and tilt head. Uh, and also lets me do complex panoramas if I find myself in the need to do that. Why am I making the decisions about going a little bit lighter when I often advocate bring the biggest stuff that you can? Well, it really involves some of the other stuff that I'm bringing. My wife and I often joke that we are the most gear intensive family on the planet with my photography, our kite surfing, mountain biking, skiing. It's just literally the most gear intensive activities that a family could love to do. This is the kite surfing gear that we as a family are bringing along. My wife will have another duffel 
a Patagonia duffel this size. This is one of those L.L. Bean roller bags that I've recommended for years. They're an extra large rolling duffel. In this duffel are five kite surfing kites of varying sizes, two control bars, uh, a couple of harnesses, a couple of kite bags, uh, all loaded into this one 50 pound bag. And this bag is my carbon hydrofoils, both for Stacy and I. We've got the masts and the carbon wings and stabilizers and fuselages that connect to the board to put you up above the water, flying over the water while you're kite surfing, along with our wetsuits to kind of pat it out. It's a specially made bag for those to protect them. It weighs about 35 pounds, so not as heavy as some of the other bags, but it doesn't roll, which is the one bummer about it. And then there's this bag, which is two twin tip kite surf boards and the two foil boards that the hydrofoils connect to, as well as a pump to pump up the kites, float coats, impact vests for Stacy and I, float coats for the kids, wetsuits for the kids, just to kind of pad everything out. So that's a fair bit of gear to start off with uh, before you ever start packing photo gear or your own personal items. So I really need to get my photo gear into one rolling duffel and my Pelican case. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. Okay, so you see why I really have to pare stuff down. I'm bringing a lot of non-camera gear. There's gonna be five big check bags, even if I pare it down to my rolling Pelican case being carried on and one big duffel just of camera gear, plus all my clothing and personal items and stuff. So. We're gonna talk about how I kind of get to that state from choosing gear to making sure that it all fits in the carry system that I'm bringing with me. And then how I go about getting that distributed for a flight on the plane uh, and then getting the stuff into the, the checked bag. So we'll go from like packing my camera bags and what I'm bringing to converting that into my carry-on system to how do I deal with checked items onto the plane? All right, so, you know, I would say first off, you know, I've got a bunch of Nikon gear in here. I've got a Nikon Z9 and the lenses that I wanna bring with me. But other things that I like to have on a trip like this, I like to have my little, my little knock around camera, which in this case is my Leica Q2. And I like that to be somewhat incognito. I'm gonna carry that on in my little book bag. That's gonna be my sort of second, uh, carry-on item on the plane. It's a little Gregory bag that I like, looks really incognito. I got my, my laptop in here, hard drives, my little Leica Q2, which I have in an old school Optech, just a little soft pouch with my Luma strap that, that runs through both of those. I can carry it that way. There's a nice little snap lock enclosure. And because I'm gonna be running around some towns you know, in places in Mexico, and I just wanna look more incognito, I'll take a little piece of good quality gaff tape and just cover that nice little red like a badge on there to make it look a little less snazzy than it actually is. So, you know, you put that guy back in its little Optech pouch and snap it. And that goes into my carry-on. Easy to access while well, I'm in the airport, on the plane, moving around, want to take pictures of the kids, whatever. I'm going to take my GoPro Hero 10, drop it into this easily accessed front little pocket on this bag along with two spare batteries for it. Boop. And I've got some other GoPro accessories, sort of a, a heavier duty underwater housing for it. There's my, my little carry-on. I got headphones in there, hard drives, my computer. Oh, spare like a battery. I'll just throw that right in with the GoPro and its spare batteries. Um, so easily accessed should I need it. I've got some more GoPro stuff like chargers and a spare housing, as I said, and a little media kit for it that can go into my check bag, but the batteries aren't in there. Remember, you don't want to check lithium ion batteries in the check bag. I also have my little DJI Air 2S drone. I love having this thing down in where we're going. There's not a lot of regulations. I'll still use the Before You Fly app, but you can really run this thing where you want. Uh, and it's really fun to practice chasing kite surfers out over the water. A little dangerous, but a lot of fun, so I'll be doing that. Notice I've pulled all three of the batteries out of there. I want those packed into my carry-on. Um, so those are gonna come separate, and these guys can get 
checked. I'll deal with that in just a second. So what's coming with me for camera gear? I've already spent some time packing my photo bag with everything I might want to have with me. I got this little pocket in the Naya Evo, has a lens pen for cleaning a lens and a pinch, my good headlamp, uh, some lens cleaning claws, this one that Nikon Professional Services gives out that's in its little containers nice, a couple of Allen keys. I'll take those Allen keys. I'm not going to worry about them because they're getting checked, but none of that stuff's a problem getting checked. I've got this front pocket this big kind of horseshoe pocket up here that if I pop my compression straps, opens up really nicely. And inside here, I have a big PD capable uh, anchor battery pack, which I put in my links. It'll run the Z9 while you're filming, uh, keep it running indefinitely. That needs to go into the check bag. You can't be checking big lithium ion batteries. I've got a bunch of spare CF Express B cards in there. I've got, a spare battery for the Z9, that needs to go into the carry-on. So that's got to come out of the bag, all right? That's basically it. In here, some business cards, little assorted sundries. The memory cards can stay in there, no big deal. So that's that compartment. Then in my top access compartment, well, let's look at the camera gear. Let's look at that first. I'm going to pull that out because I don't want to check it. But I have it packed in here. All right, I've got right in here is my HB97 hood, which fits my 14 to 24, 2.8. And with uh, for the 112 millimeter filters that I love to use, I have six 112 millimeter filters in this case the uh, UV, the 3, 6, and 10 stop neutral density, uh, circular polarizer, and a neutral night filter in case I want to do any city scenes and as well as a 77 to 112 millimeter adapter to make it work with the other two lenses i'm bringing besides the 14 to 24 the the 24 to 120 f4 and the 100 to 400 f4 which both need to come out of there as well as the z9 body itself with its l bracket so there are all those i have some cleaning supplies right in here some lens cleaning supplies a um, Zeiss wipes and a good microfiber cloth. I don't think I put anything in the bottom pocket. I got room to spare in there. So that's it. There's a divider that keeps the top pocket divided. That is all emptied out. You know, I might as well take this opportunity um, to slip in my GoPro accessory pack. That fits really nicely in there where the, uh, where the 100 to 400 have been and I can still put some more stuff in there if I want later. I'll fill this pack up with stuff before I put it in my check duffel. I'm not carrying this on the plane. And then I open up the big clamshell open main compartment, and in there I have a separate little case because I'm using such a small internal ca or re uh, removable camera insert in this bag. I'm keeping my 14 to 24 in this little lens case. This is, this is one from MROC that I've had for a really long time. I got a blower brush. Those can stay in here. I've got a 1.4 teleconverter to work with the 100 to 400. I got a hat. I have some cleaning supplies. There's some lens wipes. There's a, a light, a sensor light in here. Some spare lens caps, just general sundry cleaning supplies little cell phone uh, tripod adapter in case I want to do anything with my cell phone on the tripod or just have it sitting on the desk next to me. This is a really cool uh, little guy that uh, Leo Photo makes that you can just mount your phone in either direction you want. It's super handy and it's got an Arca Swiss clamp if you want to use it with a tripod. So that stuff can all just stay in there. Uh, as, and I've got my DJI Air 2S. That can go in here making it nice and padded and protected to go into the checked bag. You know, if I lost my drone, I'd be sad, but it's not the end of the earth. I'm not going there specifically to do a bunch of drone work. So, you know, basically I could leave, I probably could leave my filters in there, but I don't want to, all right? So that essentially sets this bag. I could put some more stuff in here if I need the space, but it's ready to basically be checked. I probably could squeeze this into there with a little extra time, this empty case that I'm using for the 14 to 24. So the next step, I definitely can get my hat in here. The next step 
is to take all this critical stuff along with a few other critical things that I don't carry around with me when I'm photographing that I've already put in here, I'll show you, into my Pelican air case. And this thing has the tech pack divider, which I love. That's a system where you cut and customize it however you want. You can see I've got a few things in there. I have a little padding with just big microfiber cloths. Um, and I'll uh, show you how this goes. So I've got some more microfiber cloths. I have a double and triple A battery charger. Um, I've got a spare body cap. There's also a spare lens butt cap for the Z system in here somewhere. Spare eye cup for the Z9 in case I were to lose or damage mine. I really like having an eye cup. I've got my Leica's battery charger and its cord. I have my Nikon battery charger. Uh, I can use a USB-C cord for that, power delivery capable. I've got spare batteries for my headlamp, AAA batteries. Uh, and that's what I've got in here so far. I'm gonna take that 100 to 400 and drop it in this long lens spot. That fits either a 70 to 200 or the 100 to 400 with its foot on it. I'm gonna take the L bracket off the Z9. It's so big that with the L bracket, it gets a little ungainly in this case. So this is Kirk's L bracket. I like the way that it's little Allen wrench fits right in with it. And we just drop the Z9 in here kind of at an angle. Fits just right like that. And then we'll put this big battery for it right here. We've got room for, let's put the lenses in. The 14 to 24 drops like that. 24 to 120 drops like that. We got room for filter, holder, and filters. Let's put the filters in that way. You can see how I'm packing this out right now. Everything closes, no problem. Padded at the top with lots of padding. We'll put our um, 1.4 teleconverter in like that. We've got a whole bunch of batteries that need to get in here. There's the drone batteries. We got U uh, our AAA batteries, AAA charger, the spare butt cap, the Nikon Z9 spare battery. We could put the uh, L bracket in there underneath the 1.4 teleconverter, Nikon charger, Leica charger in next to it, cord, close, Oh, here's our little spare eye cup. As you can see, everything fits in there quite nicely. And then, now, all your critical gear easily rolls, checks onto the plane, and fits in the overhead. I'm kind of tired of carrying a big backpack with me through the airport. So that's my big overhead bag. I've got that, plus my little book bag with the laptop, and entertainment and snacks, a jacket that fits under the seat in front of me. Then it's got, I'm down to my tripod. Tripod is gonna go into its own little bag. I will rotate it so that the leveling adapters knob isn't in the way. Lock my pan, open up the uh, lever clamp. Actually, I'll just put this inside the middle here. This is my uh, LRP3 nodal rail. Just drop that right into the middle. I'm gonna take the case for this guy. It opens right up like this. Actually, I'll just take that nodal rail out for now. Slide this guy into here. It actually comes with a different case, but I use one of these shorter, slightly uh, more modular cases that Leo Photo makes. And whew, tripod is ready to pack in. All right, the next thing is packing the big rolling bag. All right, so here is my favorite rolling bag for traveling with gear. This is the Osprey Transporter. They make it in a 90 and a 120. This is the 120, it's huge. Um, people always debate, is this small enough to travel uh, 
with, you know, to ch with normal check bag fees? Well, David Archer and I have flown all over the world with these and have yet to run into a problem with it. You got these sort of securing straps, three of them that come out of it so that once you get the load in here, you can put those back together and cinch over the top. Um, I've got a Ziploc in here from my last trip. I'll just throw that to the side. TSA notification that they went through it. I like to take my tripod and this will easily fit my tall fluid head system. The ultralight is just no problem at all. Drop it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my Evo 36 Fjord, drop it in there to the side, easy peasy. That kind of holds things together a little bit. It fits the 60C just fine too. I didn't put my hat inside the bag, I probably would. I'm gonna throw my 14 to 24's little um, MROC case that I'm bringing it in, in there to the side. And then there's still a bunch of blank empty space in here. So what do I do about that? Well, you know, you still have to have clothing and toiletries and whatnot. So after you've seen everything else I'm taking, this is all the clothes I'm bringing for three weeks in Mexico. I've got five pairs of board shorts, three tank tops, a t-shirt, a very light Arcteryx jacket, a pair of sort of yoga pants that I can wear into town or sleep in from Prana. Uh, a few pairs of underwear, a couple pairs of running shorts. I don't even like to run, I'm gonna be on beaches. I love to run barefoot in the sand for exercise, so all I need are running shorts and a tank top. Uh, and that's it, not even any socks, not even any shoes. I really prefer these, these uh, Bedrock Adventure sandals. They have a Vibram sole, they fit great. I'm gonna throw those in there. I'm gonna throw each of these little stuff sacks in here. All right, oh yeah, I have just a couple more things. A laundry bag for just, you know, tossing dirties in. We're gonna have a washer and dryer in each of the places we've rented, but if you did have to take laundry someplace and drop it off, it's nice to have a mesh lightweight laundry bag separate from your stuff sacks. I love keeping my stuff separate in stuff sacks, so I know shirts from shorts from, from chonies. I have a shorty wetsuit that wouldn't quite fit in with my hydrofoils in that bag with the hydrofoil parts and the wetsuit, so that's gonna go in there too. I'll stuff my toiletries in the morning that I take off, just the toothbrush, conditioner, that stuff. Um, oh, I've got a lightweight uh, Patagonia Torrent shell. This is a really lightweight uh, shell that's completely waterproof with pit zips that open up and a really nice hood. I'm gonna wear these eat comfy flip-flops on the plane. That's it, basically. I'm gonna take those three straps that I dug out earlier and then reburied. And every time you pull them out with the thought that, oh, this will make life easy. And then when you put stuff in, they get re-crushed in there. But this holds the whole load together in this transport bag. You just, you got these three straps. There's one snap and you can cinch it. And then a final one over here. Kind of holds the bag together and keeps it structural rigidity while it's getting thrown around by baggage handlers. I guarantee Osprey put this in here for a reason, so I use it. You cinch that up, you can easily, it's a real easy thing. You just turn that, I put a TSA lock. I know they're somewhat useless, but maybe it discourages someone. And click. Here's one more. Click like that. And then the last thing to do is weigh it. And to weigh everything before I take off, you gotta make sure it goes under 50 pounds. I use this really cool little scale device. I'll put a link to it in this video's description, uh, as well as it's on my, it's in the packs and straps section of my ATS links that are, you know, always at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links, and they're linked in this video's description. It's this little handle and you hit a zero button on it, a tear button, it has different, different metrics. If you're in the metric system, it'll show you kilograms. You hold it 
something dangles from it. We're only at 39 pounds. That's one thing I love about this bag from Osprey is it's big, it's cavernous, and it doesn't weigh much despite being just a joy to travel with. You put it down on the ground, it stands up by itself, its handle pops up, you can roll it. It's really quite a nice travel accessory. So I always throw this scale, this hand scale in at the last second on my trip so that on the way out, I know that I've packed each bag right to its maximum capacity. And that's essentially it. So, you know, going into the airport, I'll have my little book bag with my computer, my Leica, my GoPro, and all the, you know, snacks, jacket, things that I might want in it. And I'll have my Pelican rolling case. This is the only bag that has all my personal gear and everything non-kiteboarding photographic that I need. So that's basically my system. You know, it, I think it's really important to pack the photo kit bag that you want to carry with you. Limit yourself to the gear that fits in that and then make sure that it all packs in the way you want to carry it, test it out for how you'd use it in the field in your destination. Then if you unpack it into your carry-on system, whatever that carry-on system is, if you don't have one of these Pelican air cases, I'm telling you, it makes traveling as a photographer on the plane just, it's such a joy to roll all that heavy gear instead of lugging it around in a backpack. Um, and then, you know, this, some kind of little book bag. I love this little Gregory bag. I'll put a link to this bag too. It's, it's got so many little pockets, easy to access and its harness system carries really nicely. Gregory knows how to make nice bags. It's got kind of a mesh air panel on the back. You can put a lot of weight in this if you want, but it's so tiny it slips under the seat in front of you. No problem at all. So that's what I'm carrying to Mexico. As you watch this video, I'll already be on the flight um, and I'll bring you some content from the adventures down there. I hope everyone is staying creative, having fun. Oh, you know, one thing, quick, before I sign off, we just did an office hours on uh, Tuesday and there were just, we went through everybody's best photos of 2022 and there was some epic, epic work in there. I'll link that office hours, rebroadcast the, the, the recording of the live meeting that we had um, and so that you can watch it yourself, but you can also look at the gallery, it's just, unbelievable amount of beautiful work and I'm so proud of everyone in this community for working at such a high level. It's just, it's just astounding. You know, I, I have such a great group of people who are part of this community, wonderful photographers, very, very heartful and talented. So thanks everyone for taking part in that. I hope you'll check it out if you missed it. Sign up for the next Office Hours at HudsonHenry.com slash Office Hours. Uh, we'll be doing another one in February. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. I hope you're staying safe, staying creative. If you have questions about packing or what gear to take on what kind of trip, hit me up. I'm always happy to talk about that stuff. We'll see you next week.